sixth grade, module five, lesson 12, problem set. Number one, determine the volume of the rectangular prism. Okay, so remember volume is equal to length times width times height. So we would have one and a half by a half by seven eighths. So one and a half meters by a half meter by seven eighths meters. So let's multiply all of those together. I'm going to make one and a half into a mixed fraction, or sorry, an improper fraction. Let's multiply them. We get 21. Two times two is four. Times two is, or times eight is 32. So we get 21 30 seconds meters cubed. Number two, the area of the base of a rectangular prism is four and three-fourths feet squared, and the height is two and one-third feet squared. Determine the height of the volume of the rectangular prism. Okay, so this is what we were talking about in the classwork portion. So the area of the base, so let's pretend that, I'm just gonna make this one, pretend that the area of the base is this right here, is four and three-fourths feet squared. So we don't even need to know what the length and the width is because they've already told us what they multiply to be, which makes it gives us one less step to do. So all we have to do is multiply the area of the base times the height, and we will get the volume. So we're going to do 4 and 3 fourths feet squared times two and one third feet. So let's make them um, improper fractions. 16 plus three would be 19 fourths times seven thirds. So 19 times seven. Nine times seven is 63. Seven times one is seven plus six is 13. 133 twelfths. I'm going to divide 133 divided by 12, make this back into a mixed number. So we get 11 and 1 12th left over. 11 and 1 12th feet cubed is the volume of that rectangular prism. Number three, the length of a rectangular prism is three and a half times as long as its width. The height is one fourth of the width. The width is three centimeters. Determine the volume. Okay, so let's kind of work this out. So the length is three and a half times as long as the width. And the height is one fourth of the width. The width is three. So the width equals three. The height is one-fourth of the width, so height is one-fourth of three. Remember, of means times. Width, and we need length. The length is three and a half times the width, so it would be three and a half times the width, which we know is three. And this is all in centimeters. So let's figure out the height first. Determine, so we need to figure these out before we can figure out the volume. So 1 fourth times 3 would be 1 fourth times 3 over 1, or 3 fourths meters. And the length, 3 and a half times 3, I'll make that improper fractions. So or 3 times 2 is 6, so 7 halves times 3 over 1 is 21 halves, which would be equal to 10 and a half meters. So now to find the volume, we just need to multiply all of these together. So th 3 meters by 3 fourths meters by 10 and a half meters is going to give us the volume. So we have 3, I'm going to make them all into fractions, times 3 fourths times 10 and a half was 21 halves. 3 times 3 is 9 times 21 is 189 and 1 times 4 times 2 is 8, so we get 189 eighths, but I'm going to make that back into a mixed number. 
8 goes into 18 twice. 8 goes into 29 three times. So we get 23 and 5 eighths meters cubed. Number four. Write a numerical write numerical expressions to represent the volume in two different ways and explain what each reveals. So two different ways we could do it. Let's do it the um, the way we um, the way we learned how to do it back in fifth grade. The first way. So length times width times height. So one way would be I'll do a different color. So one way would be to do ten and a half inches by one and two thirds inches by six inches. Another way would be to find the volume of the base and multiply it by the height. So let's find the volume of the base, 10 and a half times one and two thirds. 10 and a half is 21 halves times one and two thirds would be five thirds. 21 times five is 105 sixths. So we could do 105 sixths, and I'm just going to leave it as a an improper fraction for now because we might need it in that form anyway. So we could do 105 sixths inches squared times, so that's that, that's the area of the base times the height, six inches, will give us the volume. And so we explained what each reveals. We just did volume, so length times width times height is equal to volume, or area of the base times height is equal to volume. So those are two strategies we could take. Um, and then B, determine the volume. So I'm going to take, since we've already done this first step here, I'm going to use this one, 105 sixths times six inches. Let's do 105 times six. It's 636. And I'm going to divide to figure out what that would be equal to. One other thing we could have done is if you notice, these sixes cancel each other out, and so we could just get 105 over one, but we can just keep do it this way for fun. Six goes into three zero times. Six goes into 35 times. And we get 105 inches cubed. Number five, an aquarium is in the shape of rectangular prism has the following dimensions. Length is 50 centimeters, width is 25 and a half centimeters, and height is 30 and a half. Write numerical expressions to represent the volume in two different ways and explain what each reveals. So the first one, I'm gonna do volume equals length times width times height. So volume is 50 centimeters by 25 and a half centimeters by 30 and a half centimeters. Let me write centimeters there. So the other way we could do it is volume is equal to area of the base times the height, which would look like, let's do, so the base would be length times width, 50 times 25 and a half. So let's do 50. I'm going to do a box method for this because they're big numbers and I just think it'll make it simpler. You can do it. You can make them in proper fractions if you want. So 25 times 50 will be 1,250. And 50 times a half, half of 50 is 25. If we add those together, we get 1,275. So the 
area of the base would be 1,275 centimeters squared times the height, which was 30 and a half centimeters. So this explains what that is, and this formula explains where those numbers came from. So then B says determine the volume. So I'm going to do this formula since we've already figured out the first part. And again, I'm going to go with the box method. We have 1,275 by 30 and a half. So 1,275 times 30 we get 38,250 and then half of 1,275, I'm going to divide by 2 to find half of it. 2 goes into 7 3 times. 2 goes into 15 7 times. We have 1 left over out of 2. So 637 and a half. I wrote that backwards. So let's add 38,250 plus 637 and a half. So we're going to have a half, 7, 8, 8, 8, 3, 38,887 and a half centimeters cubed is our volume. Number six, the area of the base in this rectangular prism is fixed at 36 centimeters cubed. So it's saying the area of the base here, 12 times three is 36 centimeters squared. So they've already done length times width. At the height, as the height of the rectangular prism changes, the volume will also change as a result. So let's complete the table. So they've already done two, three. It looks like it's going up height one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if the height is one, and what was the volume going to be? So we need to multiply by the area of the base. Because remember, it's height times the area of the base. Base times height is volume. So we need to just multiply, if they've given us the height, they've given us that the area of the base is equal to 36 centimeters squared, so we're just going to multiply the height times 36 and get our volume. So 1 times 36 is 36, 2 times 36 would be 72, 3 times 36 would be 108, 4 or 5, let's do 36 times 6. would be 196, did I do that right? That doesn't seem right. Six times three is 18, nope. 18 plus three is 21, 216 cubic centimeters. Seven times 36, I'm just gonna add another 36 onto this. Be 252 cubic centimeters, and then they already have eight there for us. B says, write an equation to represent the relationship in the table. Be sure to define the variables used in the equation. So our equation, what we did is we took the height times 36 for all of it, and we got volume. But it wants us to write an equation, so we need to define some variables and everything. Um, so I'm going to say that x is equal to the height. Actually, you know what? Make h is equal to height, because that just makes sense. And v is equal to volume. You can use x and y if you want, but I 
just don't see why. So we can do 36 times the height is equal to volume. That's our equation. What is the unit rate for this proportional relationship? What does it mean in this situation? So the unit rate is how, how much it's increasing by. So in this particular situation, our unit rate is 36. So let's say the unit rate is 36 because for every centimeter of height, so for all the height, each time we go up by the height, the area of the base, or for every centimeter of height, the volume increases by 36. The volume increases by 36 centimeters squared. Number seven, the volume of a rectangular prism is 16 and 328 thousandths centimeters cubed. The height is three and 14 hundredths centimeters. Let B represent the area of the base of the rectangular prism. Write an equation that relates the volume, the area of the base, and the height. Okay, so the volume would be is 16 and 328 centimeters squared. I'm going to leave off the centimeter squared there because we're writing an equation. So the volume is 16 and 328 thousandths, and that is equal to, let B represent the area of the base times the height. So B times 3 and 14 hundredths. Or we can move it around. You could also write either way. Those equations will work, or you can flip them. Um, solve the equation for B. So I'm going to write it this way. And to figure out what we're going to do, we need to divide because we are multiplying. So we're going to do the opposite. So let's divide 16 and 328 thousandths. divide it by 3 and 14 hundredths. So I'm going to move this one over two places to make that 314. So I need to do the same thing on this side. Bring the decimal point straight up. It's very important that we keep all of our digits aligned here and our decimal point in the right spot. Otherwise, we'll get the wrong answer just because the decimal point will be in the wrong spot. And that's the last thing we want after all this hard work. Okay, so how many times can 314 go into 1? Zero. Well, that would be zero. Can it go into 16? No. Can it go into 163? No. How many times could 314 go into 1,632? Well, I definitely know it can. Let's see, 314 times 10 would be 3,140. And 1,600 is about half of that. So let's try half of 10, or let's try 314 times 5. One thousand five hundred seventy. Okay, it goes in five times. Thirteen minus seven is six. Five minus five is zero. One minus one is zero. So we get sixty-two. Bring down the eight. How many times could three hundred fourteen go into six hundred twenty-eight? I think twice. Let's just double check that. Yep, exactly twice. So we get 5 and 2 tenths B is equal to 5 and 2 tenths centimeters. So the area of the base is 5 and 2 tenths centimeters squared.